So I just finished watching Painting with John on HBO. I thought it was really good. Uh, I didn't know him before this series, although I did watch an episode or two of a series, I think it was called Fishing with John, with him and Tom Waits. I can't remember. It was on Filmstruck, if you remember Filmstruck, R.I.P. Uh, it was kind of weird. This is uh, a little bit interesting and weird uh, in the sense that it's not your standard documentary. He's breaking the fourth wall, talking to the camera, and saying some really interesting things. But the, the point of me talking about this is that I wanted to talk about one thing in particular that stood out to me through the whole thing, even though there were many moments that were, that were good. And it was the uh, Mighty Mouse conversation, or Mighty Mouse uh, story he was telling about his brother and answering the phone. So, take a listen. When my brother Evan was a kid, he would be a character. When he was like three, four, five, he would be Rin Tin Tin for a week. He would demand to have his food served to him on the floor in a bowl. And my parents went along with it and would Rin Tin Tin, it's time for dinner. And he would come and eat on the floor. And there was about a week where he was Mighty Mouse and he would just be flying around the house with his cape on, just whoosh. Here goes Evan. And my father was waiting on this important phone call. Uh, and it, there was something terrible about it. He had that thing where he was beholden to this guy who was supposed to call him it was about a job or something. I was six, five, you know, so I don't really know. I just remember being, not liking this thing. It was like my father's waiting for this guy to call him and he's not calling him. It's like this guy's got power over my dad. So whatever it was, it's just like, I, I didn't like it. And, uh, you know, it's 1958, 59, something like that. And so we've got the, you know, we've got the phone on the wall. And it never rings because nobody else has a phone. And if your phone rings, it's a big deal. And my father's waiting on this phone call. And uh, the phone rings. And Evan comes flying through the kitchen in his cape and answers the phone. It's, hello. And then there's a pause. And then he goes... No, this is Mighty Mouse. And then he hangs up the phone. And I'm like, oh, Evan, what did you do? You can't do that. But the amazing thing was my parents did not scold him. They weren't mad at him. Because Evan being Mighty Mouse was more important than the phone call. And that's huge to me. That has to be one of the best stories that I've heard. And the reason is that, at least for me, I like that story because it reminds me that I shouldn't take myself too seriously. Sometimes I fall into that trap. Um, maybe some of you can relate to that. And it sort of elevates the idea of fun and just rolling with things and not being so upset you know at the little things that 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 story it's kind of an interesting thing that that story stood out to him because it's probably so rare most most parents in that situation would have probably have said what are you doing you just ruined everything you this was an important call and it also reminds me there's a speech by Neil deGrasse Tyson um, I can't remember where it is but he talks about how children are sort of experimenting with things and breaking uh, things and the good that actually could come out of that as, as long as it's not like your iPhone I suppose uh, but if it's a meaningless thing not a meaningless thing but something as small as in cost as like an egg and how you should just let them break it you know just let me I'll, I'll just play a clip of it and uh, and you tell me what you think uh, I find that young people are excited about stem careers but their parents are often not blocking these dreams for their kids What's the answer? Yeah, because kids are, are born scientists. They're always turning over rocks and plucking petals off of flowers. They're always doing things that, by and large, are destructive. And uh, <laughs> no, that's what exploration kind of is. If you, you take stuff apart, whether or not you know how to put it back together. This is what kids do. 
a, an adult scientist is a kid who never grew up. That's what an adult scientist does. So what happens at home is the kid reaches in the refrigerator, pulls out an egg, and starts juggling it. What's the first thing you do as a parent? Stop playing with the egg. It could break. Put it back. Excuse me, this is an experiment in the material strength of... <laughs> Let the kid find out that when it drops, it breaks. That's, that's, this, this is a physics experiment. Rapidly turned into a biology experiment, okay? The yolk oozes out, you say, hey, that becomes a chicky one day, okay? Wait, how does this gooey oak become a chicky? Well, that's biology, check that out. And what did the egg cost you, 20 cents? President of Harvard once said, if you think education is expensive, you should try the cost of ignorance. So we don't have enough parents who understand or know how to value the inquisitive nature of their own kids because they want to keep order in their household. Kids go in into the kitchen and pull out all the pots and pans and start banging on them. What's the first thing you say as a parent? Stop making all that noise. Stop the racket. You're getting the pots and pans dirty. You just squashed an entire experiment in acoustics. So. I'm not worried about kids. People say, what can I do to get my kids interested in science? They're already interested in science. You're the one who's the problem. So almost my entire professional energy is focused on adults because they outnumber kids. They vote. They run the world. They wield opportunities. Kids will be fine. <laughs> so I think they're kind of talking about the same thing there in that you're trying to minimize the emotions you have with things that make you behave like an adult or an, a, uh, an adult who's acting perhaps a little too seriously. I don't want to say an asshole, but something um, where you've maybe forgotten in the moment that this is all kind of like a, a comedy. It is a tragedy, but it's also a comedy that it's kind of a, what, is, what did Jimi Hendrix say? There are many here among us who feel that life is but a joke. I don't know if it's a joke, but uh, it's definitely strange. I don't know if it's to be taken seriously or not. But I like the Mighty Mouse story and the Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, child scientist egg story because I think they're touching on something useful, to me at least, that I can take with me and remember that I'm just trying to have fun within reason and be respectful of other people, of course. But... It's all just kind of about experimentation and Mighty Mouse, maybe. All right, thanks for watching. Patreon.com slash Arthouse Radio. I enjoyed uh, Painting with John. I think you should check it out. It's very quick, six episodes. I think they're maybe like 20 minutes each, which I kind of like. You can rip through, some, through something really quick. Uh, kind of like a Kurt Vonnegut book. It's not, uh, it's, there's a lot of great stuff, but the way it's written, it's very easy uh, to sort of plow through.